when Richard Ayoade makes a book about a film that you really love, um, but that not a lot of other people love, you know you're gonna have to read it. Uh, welcome to a very different uh, book versus movie video. Welcome back, or if you are new here, welcome. My name is Katrina and I make bookish content here on this channel at least twice a week and then movie or book to movie content at the weekend. Um, make sure you subscribe because I have some exciting videos coming up this week. I have a book haul for you, I have a reading vlog and I have some other stuff that's in the process of being made. Next week will be a straight movie review video because there is a new release that I'm going to be watching at home and then bringing you my thoughts on. But um, today, yeah, it's going to be a slightly different video. So I want to know in the comments what you think of this video. I'd really appreciate the feedback. If you think it's um, an interesting concept, a different way of doing it, um, then just write hit in the, in the comments. And if not, if you think it's a bit of a miss, write miss. Or, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down. Either way. Um, yeah, a friend told me about this book, Ayoade on Top, talking about view from the top that movie starring Gwyneth Paltrow that I feel like I had it on video but I might have had it straight on DVD I don't think I saw it at the cinema but I have seen it multiple times however I haven't seen it recently so what I'm going to be doing in this video is um re-watching the movie having just read the book Ayoade on Top by Richard Ayoade talking about view from the top um the book itself i really really recommend it i haven't read his other movie books um but that's just because i had to go straight in for this one because i love this film um but i i am intending on reading his other movie books because i love the way he talks about this film um i love watching him on the screen so it was interesting having him narrate in my ear um but yeah he talks about View from the Top. I'm going to watch it and then I'm going to share my thoughts with you on uh, his views on the film versus my views on the film in a very different book versus movie video. Okay, I've just been to watch the film. So firstly, I'm pleased that the book made me re-watch the film because it's been so long since I watched it. I feel like I watched it a few times over the first couple of years that it was out. It came out in 2003. It was originally meant to come out in 2001, but then 9-11 happened and it's about planes. And so apparently they reshot quite a bit of it to make it a bit more sensitive um, to that topic. And there was supposed to be a scene where they prepared for a terrorist attack and stuff like that, but that obviously wasn't in there. Um, but I remember definitely watching it at university and I was at university between 2003 and 2008. So I remember watching it then, but I don't remember watching it since. I had completely forgotten the men who were in this film. So I remembered Gwyneth Paltrow, Kelly Preston, Christina Applegate, but I just didn't remember at all that Rob Lowe is in this, that Mark Ruffalo is in this, and that Mike Myers is in this. Um, so thank you to Richard Iowadi for inspiring me to rewatch this because apparently there was a lot that I had forgotten about. So his book goes into so much detail. I think the like premise behind the book is that he wanted to analyse it like he would do Citizen Kane and he goes ahead and does that and then he goes off on various tangents and things as well. So the book itself, because it goes into more detail, you definitely do watch the film with a renewed perspective. He talks about the symbolism that's used, for example, at the beginning of the film when she's a child, um, she kind of uh has dreams and aspirations and those are symbolized through like you know the, her current life is the fact that her birthday candles won't even be lit because they're kind of blown out by all the like rubbish in her life and then she watches this red balloon that she's been given floating away into the sky and she dreams of floating away into the sky and then when she's a bit older we see her with her back to the trailer rather than being in the trailer and she works in the luggage department and that's aspirational um and so yeah it's, it's interesting kind of watching having heard that analysis um and also he talks about the fact that you get an intimate relationship with that main character because she talks directly to you so there's a voiceover there's Gwyneth Paltrow's voiceover um telling you about what's happening to her and it's all in the first person so you definitely do develop an intimate relationship with her but then also um he says you know you you get a lot of like 
um, kind of show don't tell type things but then they also tell as well so for example she's symbolically packing a bag and throwing it into the boot of a car um, but then she also talks about the fact that she drove away to wherever it was she drove away to um, so that's that's really interesting like oh yeah that's quite obvious actually um, so I can't get the hang of the fact of whether Richard Ayoade thinks this is like a really good film or a really bad film and he's just being satirical the whole time but either way I think it's a really good film I really enjoyed it it's very camp and very kitsch but um for me the film has kind of like three strains so it's obviously a romantic comedy and Gwyneth Paltrow kind of serves as our like main lead in terms of like the romance and the dramatics dramatic side of the film it's her journey you know to the top so she can have a view from the top um but then we've got very obvious comedy that's provided by mike myers in the main and then we've got some like subtle comedy which um candice bergen bergen bergman bergen candice bergen um provides a lot of her comedy is very very subtle but very very funny and I think you only really get a lot of her humor on a repeat watching you've got obviously yeah you're very very obvious Mike Myers comedy but then yeah her other stuff on a repeat watching is very funny and I really like that about it um yes in the book he mentions the fact that Gwyneth Paltrow's hand double or hand yeah hand double must get, get a lot of work in this film because we see a lot of hands coming in and a lot of hands doing this and I don't know if this is to do with the fact that it's reshot um but yeah Richard Ayoade having pointed that out I was watching and I was like there is a lot of hand shots in this we see a lot of hands doing things and hands doing this and you know packing the bag and holding on to the balloon and doing things on the aeroplane and this this watch that Mark Ruffalo gives her and it comes into play a lot and I'm like yes actually um and I there are certain other parts and I'm like I wonder if that is Gwyneth Paltrow I wonder if that is a, a body double and then I couldn't keep a straight face when there's a scene with Gwyneth Paltrow in a face mask Richard Ayoade points out in the book he goes into Gwyneth Paltrow's goop company um and obviously now netflix show and he was, <laughs> was like you know it, it shows her in a face mask or goop if you will <laughs> it's just like i cannot watch that bit and sort of take it seriously because he has this whole thing about the fact that mark ruffalo comes in in a pizza uniform and he's like it, it does say in a scene beforehand that he'd had to take a second job to to get into uh, to pay for law school but it's not clear whether this is his second job or whether he's just gone to one of those speciality shops and got a pizza guy's uniform and again, that whole scene with the face mask in the pizza uniform he just dissects that so perfectly you can't watch the film and take that scene seriously at all it was so funny I wasn't paying attention to anything that was going on in the screen I was just like well I always assumed that he'd taken a job as a pizza guy to pay for law school and he was just delivering the pizza to her or like maybe it was the end of his shift and he was finishing and bringing a pizza home that's what I've taken from that scene but now that Richard Richard Iowadi said that maybe you know he's gone to a speciality shop to get this costume and he's maybe working as something else to support his law school oh my goodness I couldn't look at that scene um with a straight face anymore as well as the goop on uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's face it was really interesting I was like oh that changed my perspective of that the hand thing and then the the voiceover with the show don't tell but they're showing and telling um that side of it really definitely changed my watching of it um to a certain extent uh the so just going to the film in general rather than the book versus the movie whatever this is having watching the movie having read the book um the film itself it was great to rewatch, and I really did enjoy it and I had forgotten all the men that were in it so weird obviously the women made a bigger impact on me which is great um but yeah the 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 airline that Gwyneth Paltrow and Christina Applegate initially work for um their motto is big hair short skirts and I'm like oh that's a bit oh I don't like that and I think it's meant to make you feel a little bit like that but again I don't know if maybe that would have been called into a bit more question was it made in 
2011 rather than 2001. Um, and then there are a lot of shots in the film where there's underwear on display in some way, whether, you know, it's Gwyneth Paltrow and just a t-shirt and, and underwear, or whether, you know, the bra's hanging out here or the bra's hanging out here or the pants are hanging out on top of the trousers. And I'm like, there's a lot of underwear on display. And then this film's made by Miramax. And I'm like, it's just some sort of connection there. I'm clearly reading too much into this. Richard Ayoade did not go into that in his book, but I'm like, is there a connection there? There's a lot of a lot of skin, a lot of underwear, a lot of kind of implied stuff in there, and it's made by Miramax in like that time frame. Um, so yeah, so that's that's interesting. We're not going to finish on that note. I am pleased that I read Richard Ayoade's Ayoade on Top um, concerning this film as he was reading it to me because I listened to it on audiobook I was thinking about the film and I enjoyed watching the film it is a very short film so if you have watched this film or you go away from this video and watch this film and you spot anything that's like glaringly obvious like that do comment and let me know this has been a bit of a different video it's kind of a book versus movie book review movie review all rolled into one it's basically everything i do here on this channel um so yeah do let me know in the comments if this was a hit or a miss for you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed <laughs> thumbs down if you didn't enjoy any reactions a good reaction make sure you are subscribed so that my next video lands in your subscription feed i do have a book haul coming up for you on tuesday and next week i have a very exciting live video coming your way so you want to hit that bell so that you get notified as to that thank you very much for watching i will see you on tuesday with my book call